Hey ho, John Lee Dumas here of Entrepreneur on Fire, the number one business podcast, and you are listening to the How to Quit Working Show by Jeff Steinman, where you'll hear insights, stories, and inspiration from successful entrepreneurs who quit their job and started a business. Prepare to ignite. This is the How to Quit Working Show. Jeff Steinman believes entrepreneurship is the only true path to freedom. That's why he created the How to Quit Working Show, where you'll hear stories, insights, and inspiration from lifestyle fanatics who left their soul-sucking 9-to-5 job forever. Now, here's your host, author, entrepreneur, and ultimate lifestyle fanatic, Jeff Steinman. Hello and welcome to the How to Quit Working Show. Today we've got a couple of things to talk about. So Heather is going to talk about persistence and how persistence will help you to get anything that you want because really persistence, I found, is really the only thing that separates people who have success from those who ha- who, who don't because everybody has failure regardless of your level of success, whether you have a lot of success or, or no success, you have failure and actually more failure it means more success. But the thing that differentiates the people that get to that success from those who don't is the persistence and the sticking to it. And Heather's got some great stuff to talk about as well as a great story that goes along with that. I'm going to talk a little bit about focus because I think focus is such an extremely important part of getting anything that you want and uh, got a lot to say on that topic. I'll have to actually work to keep it as brief as I can because that is a topic that I have found to be so important and I have a ton to say on it, but I'm going to keep it brief. But we are going to talk about focus and the importance of focus. But before we get into any of that, we have a really exciting announcement about the How to Quit Working show. A couple of things that are going on and the uh, big announcement is that this is my last Friday show. I will no longer be on the Friday episodes of the How to Quit Working show and this is why. The reason is because we've gotten so much great feedback about Heather's segment and Heather is absolutely loving doing the podcasting. I mean, it, she you can just tell the energy that she brings to the table when she does it. So what we've decided is that it makes sense for Heather to do the entire Friday show. So you will not hear my voice at all on the Friday shows. It will just be Heather. It will not just be a, a partial segment that Heather does, but it will be she will do the entire show from beginning to end. So that will start next week on Friday. Look for an entire show from Heather on that uh, next Friday and every Friday following that. So we are very excited about that. That is going to be really cool. Now, if you just love listening to my voice, which I can't imagine anybody loves listening to my voice, but apparently, you know, several tens of thousands of people do. So <laughs> but if that's you, don't worry. You will not have to listen to my voice any less because I will also be working on another project that we will be announcing very shortly here on the How to Quit Working show, but I am definitely not going anywhere. Uh, Just We just decided that um, Heather needs more airtime and uh, you need more Heather, I think is another great way to put it. Uh, And that's going to be great for everyone. And that also frees me up a little bit to focus on another really cool and fun and exciting project that we have got coming up. And oh, it's almost killing me to not be able to talk about it yet. But we're not ready to announce that yet. But really cool stuff coming up next Friday. It's going to be all Heather. Now, let's talk a little bit about focus. And focus is something that... Fortunately, I have not struggled with. It, you know, everybody has things that they're good at, things that they're not so good at. I've had plenty of things that I've struggled with, but focus is not difficult for me. And and, and I think there's a there's a couple of things. And I'm not saying that I don't get distracted. I absolutely get distracted. Everybody gets distracted. We're human beings. That's part of being human. But uh, one of the things that that I have done for a very long time, and it's extremely important to do this when you're trying to start a business, particularly while you're working a full-time job, is I've been able to push away 
everything that's not moving me towards that goal. You know, I talked about the lifestyle circles a couple of weeks ago. And the things in that sustaining circle are the things that are not giving you any fulfillment. They're not providing any value to your life. They are not moving you forward. They are not really helping you in any way except giving you, you know, shorter grass or, or a clean house or clean clothes or food on the table. Not that those things aren't important, but they're not moving you towards a greater goal or a greater purpose. And the the thing that it is so critical when you are uh, when you're trying to accomplish something, particularly when you have the time constraints that how to quit working listeners have. I mean, you tell me every time I have an email exchange with somebody in one of our programs or just somebody from the show who emails me or we get a chance to talk, it, there's always this, gosh, time is such a huge issue. You, you got all kinds of things going on. You got a family, you got a full-time job, you've got other things that you, other hobbies, passions, interests, uh, not-for-profits, church activities, what have you. You've got all these things that are competing for your time, which is why focus is so important. Now, it's one thing to be able to, for example, hire someone to clean your house. Right? And that is that is a great thing to do, and if that is all feasible, that is great. That is money very well spent because it's, it frees you up then to focus on higher value activities. Right? If you think about you know an activity and you think, well, is could somebody do this for for like minimum wage? And if the answer is yes, you really really shouldn't be doing that. And there's a whole lot that's been written and said about performing in your core genius, and it's not so. I'm not even getting to that yet. Really, what I'm, what I'm talking about is getting those things off of your plate that are not moving you towards your goal. Cleaning your house certainly is not one of those things. There's no way, there's no successful entrepreneur that said, oh, I was successful because I have a very clean house. There's no successful entrepreneur that said, uh, my lawn is the greenest and the nicest, best maintained one on the block, and that's why I've been successful. Not even for a second. The thing that you have to focus on is those things that do make you successful and making that progress towards your business. Now, like I said, it, it may not be feasible to pay somebody to mow the lawn. It may not be feasible to pay somebody uh, to clean the house or to do the laundry or to do the cooking or what have you. But there are things that you can look at and say, does it make sense for me to put mental focus here? And I want to give you an example. And this is such a great example. And it is the idea of gas prices, right? There's there's always talk about, you know, oh, the gas is going up. The gas is going down. The gas is, the, oh, the gas is outrageous. This is gas, gas, gas. If you look at your Facebook feed, you'll see you know, thirty or forty different i different concepts that we're that we're going over and that we're constantly talking about. What about this? What about that? And constantly getting sucked into these really trivial things. And yeah, gas prices are a really trivial thing, right? Because for for folks who are listening to the How to Quit Working show, I mean, whether gas is five dollars a gallon or two fifty a gallon, it's probably not going to be the beginning or the end of your world. It's probably not going to have a huge impact. Not that it doesn't have an effect on somebody, but I'm talking to the How to Quit Working community here, not not anybody else. So it, when when you're when you're focusing on those things, you're taking valuable time. And you're taking valuable brain cycles away from those things that could be put towards your goal. Now, here's another example: uh, political stuff. Right? We all have our opinions about our maybe our local politics, uh, about our national politics, about world policy, about what might be going on here and there. And I think that I've always been a huge proponent of just shutting off the news, just shut it off, and and don't even look at it. And I consume very, very little news. Um, I don't spend anywhere near 15 minutes a week looking at news. Now, I certainly read things, uh, but not not news, not the latest, uh, you know, what's happening in the Middle East, what's happening uh, with the local elections in my community, what's happening uh, with what, what kind of controversy is going on in the White House. I don't think about any of that stuff. I don't focus on any of that stuff. And I think the the key is, and people people say to me, well, Jeff, don't you care about 
what's going on in the world. Well, yes, I do care about it, but the reality of it is that is not something that I'm focused on affecting right now. That is not something that I am focused on having any influence over. If you want to have influence over something, it takes a heck of a lot of focus, and it takes a lot of persistence. You have to persistently focus on it, and Heather's going to talk about persistence, so that's a great segue. But, you know, the, the thing that you have to ask yourself is, is this 10 minutes that I'm going to spend reading about uh, what's going on in the White House, what's going on in my local uh, political scene, is that going to make any difference in the grand scheme of things? In all likelihood, the answer is no. Now, if you focus on building your business and you focus on getting yourself into a position where you can then spend more time doing the things that you care about. Maybe fixing those bigger things is that thing that you really care about that's really important to you. So maybe focusing on building your business will allow you then later to put more focus that will actually matter. So when you spend time doing just these little chunks of time, right, looking at the news, focusing on the political events, you're not having any kind of an impact in any shape, form, or fashion. And you're keeping yourself from getting to a place where you can have more impact and more influence on that situation and that political thing that's going on or whatever that thing is that's going on that you're at the gas prices or whatever it is. You're, you're not having any impact in the short term. And the activities and focusing on those things in the short term are keeping you away from the activities that will give you the influence that you need in the longer term to make a difference there. So stop focusing on gas prices. Stop worrying about what's going on in the White House or what's going on in uh, the world or what's going on anywhere and worry about the thing that is going to make you more successful and therefore more influential. Now, speaking of focus, a uh, great thing that goes hand in hand and works really well with focus is persistence. Focused persistence is a great formula for success. And Heather's going to talk about persistence. Heather, take it away. Hello, Freedom Fanatics. This is Heather Osgood. Thank you so much for listening to the How to Quit Working show. I hope that you're enjoying it, and I hope that you really learn something great from what I'm about to share with you. I really, really enjoy recording these Friday segments. It's definitely a highlight of my week, and I am looking forward to doing much more of it in the future. And I have heard from productivity experts that it is a good idea to batch these sorts of things. So realistically, I could probably take four hours one afternoon and just knock out all the Friday segments all at once. And there's a reason that I don't do that. So even though it might add to the productivity level of my life, it really it would really take away from the spontaneity of the segments and how much I enjoy doing them. And the reason that I say spontaneity is because literally I feel like every single week something happens to me. Either I read something or I listen to something or I have an interaction that really just resonates with me. And I think this is what I have to share with the How to Quit Working community. They need to hear this. And this week it's kind of fun for me. And it's a story about my little mini me. Now, I don't know if you're fortunate enough to have a mini me, but I have one. She's six years old and she looks just like me. She talks like me. She acts like me. And a good percentage of the time she says things that sound just like me. Super, super fun. <laughs> it's especially great when you're in a group of people and your child says something and it sounds just like you would say it, only you wish that she hadn't said it in a group of people. Um, it's really fun when she's talking to her little younger brother and she says something that's not so nice. And I think, oh, is that the way I sound? Great. I'm so glad I got to hear that. But it can be super, super heartwarming when I hear her say things that are super sweet and loving and kind and they sound like me. So it's, it's pretty fun. It's a pretty great experience to have. And this week I had a very close encounter with my mini me. So I just had to share it with you. Now, 
we're kind of nature people we're really into being outdoors and so consequently my daughter is super into nature she calls herself a nature girl and she loves bugs and plants and sticks and dirts and dirt and animals and all that kind of fun stuff but she loves butterflies butterflies are her thing and um, she you know she's just kind of obsessed with them and she's got a whole bug collection and um, it's, it's just a really fun thing for her now where we live we're in the Pacific fly zone for all kinds of migrating birds and we're also in the fly pattern for migrating monarch butterflies if you're not familiar with what a monarch butterfly is it's a very large kind of butterfly that's orange with black veins and certain times of the year our area is just kind of full of these beautiful monarch butterflies so about a year ago she was really kind of brought to the attention that there were these gorgeous monarch butterflies all over the place and she really really wanted to catch one and you know it's kind of one of those things that you're like okay okay yeah you try to catch a monarch butterfly whatever and I really didn't necessarily ever expect her to catch a monarch butterfly well yesterday I was working at my computer and from the backyard she shouts mom I caught a monarch butterfly and I'm thinking okay maybe she did maybe she didn't she's caught little moths that are orange and black and she thinks they're monarchs and um, so I was you know really like I don't know but indeed she did catch a monarch butterfly she brought it in her little net and she showed it to me and as we're putting it in her bug jar the first thing she says is wow mom that took a lot of persistence and I cannot tell you how I just smiled in my heart. I was just so excited and so elated that here my little daughter is copying me and that she really, really understands what the value of persistence is. Now, she's six years old and she's been trying to catch a monarch butterfly for a year. A year is a really, really long time for a six-year-old. It's 16% of her life. Now, if I were gonna take 16% of my life and devote it to a project, it would be six and a half years. So basically, it's the equivalent of me investing six and a half years on this project with extreme dedication. And I tell you, she has had extreme dedication to catching a monarch if we're out and about if we see one you know at in a park locally or if we're driving or if we're in the backyard I mean the world has come to a stop because she has to get this monarch butterfly and it just it was so neat to see that she knew that this persistence had paid off for her and what just instantly hit me was how is it that this six-year-old totally gets what persistence is and how important persistence is and yet so so many adults adults really have zero persistence in anything that really matters in life. And I just, I really wanted to talk to you about that. And I want you to really think about what kind of persistence and dedication are you showing in your life? Now, if you're thinking about starting a business or if you have a business, it takes a ton of persistence. It's really easy to, to dream and to think about how great it would be. And I think especially here on the How to Quit Working show, and, and I, I talk to tons and tons of people on the phone all the time who laugh and say, yeah, wouldn't it be great if I could stop working? People want to start work, stop working. And it's one of those things that just feels so fun and easy to dream about. Everybody would love it if they could just stop working and do whatever they wanted for the rest of their lives. But in order to create that freedom in your life, you have to have a huge degree of persistence. You have to be really, really committed to your cause. Now, why is it that so many people don't have any persistence. I think the number one reason that people don't have persistence is they don't want it badly enough. How badly do you really want to start a business? How badly do you really want to escape this prison of your job and really create something that not only matters for you, but matters to your family and really is having a positive impact on society. You have to make really hard choices. The other day I was talking to one of my clients and they had made a great choice to not go to a party and instead stay home and work on their business. 
that's not an easy choice to make on a day in and day out basis those are the choices that matter after you've been at work all day is it really fun to come home and work on your business It's not, I can promise you it's not. You are tired, you're worn out, you've got a ton of commitments and other things going on in your life. But if you really, really want it, if you can feel it in the very fiber of your being and you know that this is what you need to do, then you can do it. You just have to have that why. You have to have that drive and you have to have that desire. So if you really, really want it, then you will have persistence and you will continue to really stick with what it is that you know you need to do. The next thing, I I really believe that every person questions their own abilities. It's just a, a simple fact that we really, we really question whether we're really capable of doing what we what we set out to do. Are we, you know, are we um, trained well enough? Do we have the education that we need? Do we have the resources that we need? Do we have the experience that we need? Do we have the connections that we need? We constantly question our abilities. Now, your abilities are based on a variety of different things, but only you know your true abilities, and you have to come to terms with who you are and what you're capable of creating, and then you have to stretch beyond that capability line. If you're not stretching and if you're not working outside your comfort zone, then you're really not growing. You know what you're capable of, and you just have to get really focused and really centered, and don't sell yourself short. I have to say, as as the great mom that I am, when my daughter was about four years old, she told me one day that she wanted to catch a butterfly. And I remember saying, okay, that sounds great. How are you going to catch a butterfly? And she's like, I'll just use my hands to catch it. And I said, you can't catch a butterfly with your hands. Go do something else. Go do something else more productive. And I'll never forget, a couple weeks later, she comes running in the house and she's like, guess what, mom? I caught a butterfly. And I'm like, how did you catch a butterfly? And she's like, with my hands. And I felt like the worst mother ever. Here I was telling her she had no ability ability to actually catch a butterfly with her hands and she caught one. So are you listening to those people in those authority places in your life or even people who maybe have the desire or the intention of really protecting you or caring about you and trying to keep you safe? That happens frequently. We listen to those people because we are questioning our own abilities. I'll never forget before I started my event production company, I had a boss and I talked to her about my idea and she said, and I was young at the time in my 20s, she's like, there is no way that you could ever put on a huge event, Heather. Just don't even think about it. You couldn't do it. And after nine years and over $800,000 annually in sales, I was pretty proud of myself that I could do it and I knew I could do it. She didn't have confidence in me, but I had confidence in myself. I had confidence in my abilities. Do I have confidence in my abilities all the time? Of course not. Every person has those moments when they question their abilities, but you know down deep who you are and you know what you're capable of. So I just really want to encourage you to think about embracing your shortcomings. It's super easy for us to really to focus on those shortcomings, but really think about what your limitations are and try to change those limitations. Try to really embrace that limitation and then focus on what your skills are. Focus on what you have the capability of creating. We can always grow through our shortcomings and we always have the potential to really focus on our strengths. And for some reason, we all have a tendency of focusing more on our shortcomings than our strengths. So really think about that and think about what you are really, really capable of. Because I know that each and every one of us are capable of so much more than we're actually providing the world. Next, I think that there's a huge case of the situation looking different than we think it's gonna look. So we go into a project, we go into starting our business, thinking it's gonna look a certain way, and we're good with that. And we're, we're telling ourselves, I can have persistence with this. I could do this for the next year. I could do this for the next 10 years. That's no problem at all. And then you get into it, and it looks totally different than you expected it to. It's a lot harder than you imagined it would be, or maybe it's just totally different than you expected. 
you had this, you know, this idea, this image of what life would be like. You had an idea or an image what your company would be like, maybe how your revenue would be created, and it just turns out to be different. And so at that moment, it's really easy to just throw the towel in and say, this isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I expected. I don't like it. I'm going to quit. And really that just throws all persistence out the window. If you just quit when things are different or when they get a little bit hard, you know, where is that really landing you? It's it's not landing you anywhere near success. And I know that for me, particularly because I do tend to have strong opinions about things, that in my businesses frequently I'll have things come up and I'll have an expectation and I'll have an idea of how things are going to turn out and especially when employees are involved. I get an idea of how I want them to do something or the right way to do something and it'll get going and it won't look anything like I thought it would look and at that moment it's very easy to throw up your hand and say, see, I told you, this is too hard, this is too difficult, this isn't turning out the way I wanted it to. And at those moments, you need to push through, you need to have that persistence. Because I tell you what, I have had it happen to me over and over and over again, where what I expected didn't happen, but something different did happen. And many, many times, it was better than my original inception was. It was a great, great concept, or it was a great turn of events that happened, and I just needed to push through. So really think about when things get get to be in a different place and in a spot that you didn't expect them to, to just keep persisting on through. And the final one is we quit when it's just hard. And the reality is, we all know life is just hard. And I wish that I could tell you that when you quit working and you give your notice that it is going to be rainbows and flowers, butterflies and hearts, and I can tell you what, it is not going to be that. It is super exciting. It is super thrilling when you give your notice and you have that ability to just be your own person and you really can create what you want to create. But it is a lot of hard, hard work. Life is hard. You're going to have your ups and downs. Every day is not going to be the best day of your life. You're going to have some days that are hard days. And you just have to persist through that. You have to come up with a system of knowing that when difficult times come, that you still have the prize in mind. You still have that ability to really visualize your goals, to visualize what it is that you want for yourself in your life and in your business and just keep pushing through. And the great, great thing about working for yourself and being in that lifestyle business is I can guarantee you that there are going to be many, many more wonderful, happy days than there are hard days. And the great thing is, is you just got to get through the hard days to have the good days. Yesterday, I just felt off all day long. I didn't feel like I was in my groove. I didn't feel like I was, you know, having having things un, unwind the way I wanted them to. I had a goal to talk to a certain number of people and that didn't happen and I was feeling frustrated. I was like, what am I doing? This is just hard. And then I had a meeting with a client and I everything just turned around. All of a sudden, I was like, this is it. This is what I love. This is what my passion is. And all of that hardship, all of that challenge, all of the struggle was just totally overshadowed by the fact that I was helping somebody create this awesome, wonderful business that he's totally excited about and I'm totally excited about. And um, just knowing that I'm helping that person create something that is going to be so awesome and wonderful for him and his family and so wonderful for our community and our world and it's it's just it's so invigorating and i i'm just happy that in those tough times i have the ability to really push through and persist and really just reflect back that I'm going to have hard times and the hard times are going to be short lived because the great times are coming. And the reason great times are coming is because I'm truly living in my purpose. So if you're in a position right now, maybe you're working at a job and you're feeling frustrated, you're thinking about starting a business or maybe you have started a business and you know, I I always feel for those of you out there who have a job, you've started a business, 
you're trying to balance everything, that is such a hard place to be. Just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. You can't quit today. You are so close to the finish line. Visualize that finish line. Visualize your prosperity. Visualize your capability to really create and bring to the world something truly wonderful that you have the ability to create. I know that you can do it. I know that with the information, with the, the skill, and with the true persistence, you can create anything that you imagine. So go out there and catch a butterfly. Talk to you soon. Great stuff from Heather as always. And if you want help being persistent, you want help developing that focus and that persistence that will make you successful and you like a system and a process that has been proven that has worked time and time again to help help entrepreneurs leave their job and become successful entrepreneurs, then go to howtoquitworking.com slash coaching and get the benefit of Heather's experience, her extensive experience as an entrepreneur, as well as her experience and passion as a coach and on top of it the how to quit working system all laid out for you and have someone to escort you right through that proven system that has worked for many many people in fact we're going to be talking about one of the people that that worked up for very well on the webinar on uh, saturday so if you go to howtoquitworking.com slash webinar you'll learn more about that and go to howtoquitworking.com slash coaching and get more information about coaching and i will talk to you next time on the how to quit working show thanks for joining us on the how to quit working show Tune in next time when we'll talk to another amazing person just like you who is now living the ultimate life of freedom and doing it on their terms. If you want to learn how to quit working and get these episodes delivered directly to you, visit howtoquitworkingshow.com.